My name is Ulf Granlund. I'm working as a medical physicist at Örebro University Hospital in Sweden. I'm going to talk about reduced imaging for tangential breast treatments. And uh, <coughs> uh, one of the first things I would like to say is that what I'm going to describe here is a process, and that process is taken from reality. I'm not saying that it is ideal or that anybody else should follow it, but this is the way it was. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to talk about why we did this, going to shortly describe our hospital's equipment and how we introduced Vision RT into our workflows, what methods and materials we used to evaluate our workflows and why we decided to skip KV imaging, present some results and a conclusion. So, the aim here was to sort of make ourselves sleep well at night regarding the fact that we did remove the KV imaging for our tangential breast patients. Uh, and I would like to point out that the patient group we have been looking at is only patients that have a remaining breast and who receive radiotherapy only to the breast and no lymph nodes. Uh, <clears throat> what we have been doing is we have been evaluating our KV and MV images that we have acquired during and after the introduction of our surface guidance. Uh, <clears throat> this is to shortly describe our hospital's equipment. We are working in an integrated Varian environment. We have two TrueBeam Linux, one Clinac. We have a Philips Big Bore CT and we work with AREA and Eclipse. The Vision RT equipment we have is a gate CT system at uh, the Philips CT and uh, our Align RT systems at our two true beams. We also have some extra Vision RT workstations. Uh, <coughs> So this is to show you a little bit the timeline over how we introduced the use of, of Align RT in our workflows regarding breast patients. So in May 2015, we had our systems installed. We had an introductory period where we sort of was testing out our workflows and trying to find out how to work best with the systems. And in February 2016, we treated our first DIBH patient and this was sort of the first focus we had. We wanted to use the Align RT system to get the IBH working. Uh, we then worked with the IBH for some time and at a certain point in time in September 2016 we, we stopped doing KV imaging on our tangential breasts. I'm going to describe now a little bit why. I would also like you <coughs> to um, point out the workflows we had. We had uh, a workflow before we had Align RT and then we did daily KV imaging for setup only, basically. When we came into what I here call workflow A, where we, then we used both Align RT and KV imaging when we positioned the patients. And what I here call workflow B was a workflow where we only used Align RT then. And I would kindly ask you to try to remember these workflows A and B because uh, I will be referring to them later on. So this is our pre-aligned workflow. Quite standard procedures at the time. Uh, we set the patients up according to lasers. We do 2D KV imaging. We do an online match of the KV imagings. We do treatment and an MV verification at the first treatment day. One thing I would like to point out is that <coughs> when we did the online match, we had a procedure that uh, the routine was or and is that we only did the couch shift from the match if we had uh, a shift that was larger than a certain limit. And the limit we've been working with was four millimeters. So this is the workflow A, where we used both Align RT and KV imaging. Uh, <clears throat> so what has happened is that we have inserted Align RT into 
the workflow. Just before we do the KV imaging, we also do the Align OT. And we were working like this for some time. And at the point of the couch shift, there was something we, we sort of started noticing when we had been working like this for some time. I will get back to, to that later, but <coughs> now I will also show you the workflow that we have when we don't use aligned use KV imaging. So we just simply took out the KV imaging and the couch shift based on KV imaging. Another thing that changed at this about the same time was that we did the uh, gate on for the, for the treatments also. And uh, also I would like to point out that these workflows are basically the same regardless of whether it is free breathing or the IBH. It's the same thing. One thing we also do here, which I would like to point out, is that we take daily megavoltage images in this workflow. So <clears throat> what we have looked at to evaluate these different workflows, I'm trying to describe here. We had um, for the workflow A, where we do both align RT and KV matching, we had KV images, KV match results, and we have mega voltage images to look at for each fraction. And we evaluated such results for 10 patients, and those patients were all the IBH patients. We had in total 133 KV results and 140 offline MV results to look at. For the workflow B, we evaluated um, <coughs> only MV images, of course, because we don't do KV imaging. Uh, in this case, we evaluated 30 patients. 20 of those were DIBH, 10 were free breathing. We had some 400 megavoltage images to evaluate from these patients. <coughs> uh, the data that I'm going to um, present shortly will be presented in histograms and for Presentation purposes, we have plotted them as a relative frequency, and it is relative to the total number of data points in the data series. I would also shortly like to describe how we did our image matching. We had a sharpening filter on the images, and we did matching on the chest wall bone structures that we could see in the megavoltage images. When we did these matchings, we also did rotations of the images, uh, but we, did, we haven't really evaluated those rotations. We have, in, in the evaluation, we have only been looking at translational motion, motions. But the rotations were done when we did the image matching. <coughs> so if we go back then a little bit and uh, look at this point in time where we had this workflow A, where we had both Align RT and KV imaging. And we did both. First, the Align RT setup, and then the KV imaging. And then, if the patient had a couch shift of more than four millimeters, we did that couch shift. But we noticed that in many cases, the patient actually never got any couch shift. There's an example of, of uh, how the online match results could look. Um, and uh, many, uh, at many fractions, the, the match results were on the order of two millimeters or less. So we actually never, according to our workflow, never did any couch shifts. So it's not so strange then that if we take KV images at each fraction, but we never do the couch shift. So why do the KV imaging? You could wonder. However, there were some patients, <coughs> of course, that we had to do some couch shifts according to our routine. So uh, at some fractions, in some cases, we could see that we had uh, match results that were bigger than four millimeters, and we did the couch shifts. This is supposed to illustrate this. And we started wondering, <coughs> What about these patients? Does this really, does this actually improve the treatment or what is going on here? So we tried to do some kind of theoretical evaluation of 
these results. So what we did was that we calculated dif the difference between our mega voltage match results and the KV couch shifts that were applied at some fractions. So we sub subtract these uh, KV couch, shift is couch shifts from the mega voltage offline match results. And the intention of this then was to, to have a variable, this MV, we call it here MV corrected. It could be considered kind of a measure of what would have been the result if we had never applied those couch shifts. Uh, <coughs> and when we looked at uh, these kind of results, now we have here plotted together the KV match results, and uh, that is the KV match results, not the couch shifts, but the match results. We have plotted the mega voltage match results, and we have plotted also this MV core corrected variable. Now, <coughs> somehow it looks like there are some um, systematic shifts in these things. We've been looking especially at the longitudinal displacements where we could see that there was some kind of displacement towards the negative side for the KV imaging. There was some kind of displacement towards the positive side for the MV imaging. But when we removed these uh, couch shifts, it turned out that this corrected variable actually was having a distribution that was somehow with an average closer to zero. So <coughs> we also looked at the vertical and lateral, lateral uh, displacements, um, but I'm not showing them here. The results there were about the same. We also looked at the combined displacement, where we combined, uh, calculate the, the resulting magnitude of, of the displacement, where we combined the vertical, lateral, and longitudinal, and that's the histogram to the right. And uh, looking at the average of that and the, dis the distribution as such, it to a very high degree looks like, in our workflow here at least, the results with and without couch shifts are basically the same. There is not much of a difference. The results are the same. <coughs> so somehow this would lead us to the conclusion that at least in our situation here, doing the couch shifts actually didn't really improve the treatments. So at a certain point in time, in September 2017, we stopped doing these couch shifts and KV matches. And uh, <coughs> what we then wanted to do, of course, was to evaluate how did this work out. So we can now, at a later point in time, we can compare the results from these uh, two workflows, the one which I call A, which is with both Align RT and KV imaging, the one which I call workflow B, which is with only Align RT then. And uh, for the workflow A, we had 10 patients and 140 images. And uh, for the workflow B, we have 30 patients and 400 images. And uh, <coughs> the results from this would look something like this. So we have the, the vertical displacements, the longitudinal displacements, and the lateral displacements, and also the combined magnitude. And from looking at the distributions, uh, they look rather similar. And also, I believe that for the workflow B, the, the spread is within limits that we, we have to consider quite acceptable for these tangential breast treatments. Within two to three millimeters, we have for the displacements most of the, the results. Uh, <coughs> In a tabular format, we can look at it this, look it like this, and um, again, somehow we felt that these overall results with and without KV imaging are quite similar. Perhaps we could even say that it is slightly better without KV imaging. At least the combined magnitude error is somewhat lower, actually, in, in, in our workflow B here. So that's a conclusion we sort of came to. <coughs> but this is looking at things in a sort of um, 
average way, but patients are not averages, so what does it look like for individual patients? And uh, this is an example patients where we have some very nice results. This is the offline mega voltage match results from a patient that was set up only using a line RT. And many of the results are, or almost all, are within plus minus two millimeters that we have seen. And this looks really nice. But this is another example of a patient that doesn't look quite as nice. Uh, the deviations are much larger than, larger than two millimeters, and uh, also they seem to vary quite a lot from, from treatment to treatment. And <coughs> why was this then? Uh, well, when we looked at the images, we could see that for this particular patient, the breast had changed anatomically in size and shape during the course of the treatment. So if we look at the contour that is from the mega voltage image and compare it to the contour that is from the DRR, they are quite different. And uh, actually what has been happening is that this breast has been shrinking during the course of treatment. Uh, <clears throat> So our conclusions then were that um, <coughs> while we were working with both surface guidance and KV imaging, we did not really see that the KV imaging sort of improved things noticeably. So after we had removed the KV imaging and we evaluated the situation then, we believe that the results we get are equally good as uh, uh, with surface guidance and no KV imaging. So a conclusion also is that by removing the KV images, we can save time in the workflow and we don't have to deliver any imaging dose to the patient at all. But we need to put in uh, some caution here because anatomical changes can occur during the course of treatment and these somehow have to be handled and we need to have some kind of routine in place to handle them. Looking at uh, evaluating the MVG, MV images during the course of treatment for individual patients, it could be one way of doing it. It has been suggested that this surface statistics tools in our line RT could be used. We haven't tried it, so we don't know. And I would also like to point out that what we have done here is only valid for tangential breast patients with the remaining breast and no lymph nodes. So we don't think it applies, for example, as easily to those who have the lymph nodes treated, not at all. 